Hi and welcome back. So in this video we're going to talk about the Cano model. As per the famous research, uh, the decision customers make when they buy a product and service work at the conscious and the subconscious level. And in order to be successful, we must understand a customer need much better than they understand themselves. So in this video, we have talked about all the uh, Cano model parameters, including the basic performance and excitement parameters. So please be with me and watch the video till the end. So let's begin on today's topic on Kano model. So in this video, we're going to talk about uh, how the customer needs keeps on changing from time to time. We'll also discuss what is Kano model in brief. We'll literally look at few examples as well in this case. Then we look at each of basic satisfiers and delight in more detail. And the lastly, we will cover the five categories of Kano model. So the fast evolution of technology combined with the change in the customer demographic and the expectations are forcing business to be more swiftly and frequently adapt to the way they operate. So then when the customer priority shifts, like earlier we are using the old generation phones. So now the, as the technology is evolving, we are shifting towards the more advanced phone like iPhone. So the business must be prepared to shift with them. Otherwise, the business that is willing the battle for customer today can easily find itself on the losing side of tomorrow. So to respond to the changes, we must constantly upgrade our product from time to time. And so that we the need that was excitement from them yesterday is now a basic need today. So the Kano model was developed by Dr. Norioka Kano. So if we say, uh, how do we measure satisfaction? Or how do we choose what to build in order to provide it to the customer? Or how do we go beyond satisfaction into delight? So these questions are basically not easy to answer, but thankfully there is a very useful tool to guide us through them and it is Kano model. It is all about how to delight your customer. So Kano model was created in early 1980s, but still continues to be an essential tool even today, irrespective of the industry size or matter. So the Kano model is useful in gaining the thorough understanding of the customer's need. It also says that when the product and service is much more than just the functionality itself, it is also about the customer's emotions. For example, all the customers who buy a new car would expect it to stop when they hit the brake but many will be delighted by the voice activated parking assist system. One important point to keep in mind is over the time when the customer get used to excitement features, the features will become more of expectation and move to become the basic feature. In other words, the feature which is was earlier was not even expected become a must have. Earlier, it absence would have been unnoticed, but now it absence causes dissatisfaction among the customers. Example could be the power steering in car or the camera function in any mobile. So what would be your approach for putting these needs to good use? So firstly, I would like to work towards developing the identified basic and the performance features and services so that it is maintained at a level where it continues to satisfy the customer. There should not be any decline in these features or service. Secondly, I would focus on developing the identified excitement features. These would uh, eventually transform to be the basic must haves. I would innovate new features or services which could uh, continue to add the wow factor. And thirdly, but the, not the least, I would work on the cost optimization or the cost cutting on identified in different features or services. I will also take a precaution of not overwhelming the customer with products or features. More is not always great. The product feature or service should be declining with the requirements of target customers. So when we talk about the Kano model, there are basically three different types of attributes. They are threshold or the basic attributes. Then we have the satisfier or the performance attributes. Then we have the excitement or the delighters. So when we talk about the basic or the threshold attributes, 
these are the basic features that customer expect a product or service to have for example when you book a hotel you will expect a hot water and a bed with cleanliness as absolute minimum so the next are the performance attribute of the satisfiers so these elements are not absolutely necessary but they, as they increases the customer enjoys more of it returning to our previous example so you would be pleased to discover that your hotel room has free uh, wi-fi and hdtv where you normally expect to have a I have a paid Wi-Fi and a standard TV. Next is your excitement attributes or delighters. They are the surprise element that can really boost your product competitive edge. They are the features that customer even don't know that they want and are delighted when they find it. So from the previous sample, they might find the complimentary Belgium chocolate that have been placed on their bed when they are about to enter the room. So you can see that if the product feature don't meet a customer threshold attributes, his or her satisfaction level will be very low. However, even if you fully deliver on these, you won't even impress customer that much. Most product compete on performance attributes, where the customer weighs upon only one product against each other and judges the satisfaction by the availability of various features. But she or he may discover an excitement attribute that really appeals to her or her him and gives her the high satisfaction even if it isn't perfectly implemented. So we have divided Carnot model categories into five. So on the x-axis uh, you will find we have the app features whether it is present or absent. On the y-axis we have the satisfaction level whether it is high or low. So we'll take the five categories one by one. So first is the must be feature. It is represented by this thing. It represents the that it cannot increase your satisfaction, but the absence can decrease the satisfaction. As the, as the name signifies, they are the must be features. And uh, some of the examples could be the working steering on the vehicle, the ability to make a phone calls from any new smartphone, or buttons on the button down shirt sounds pretty obvious right that is the point the must be features must be present or the product won't work and won't hold any value in the eye of customer so next is the delighters so they are represented as so the delighters are basically the inverse of the must be features simply including these features no matter the level of functionality can be enough to enhance your user satisfaction Along with this, the absence of the attractive feature doesn't use, affect the user satisfaction at all since the user didn't expect these features to be included in the first place and it is a surprise to them. The best example could be if you are selling a car and you're promising that the car would give you a mileage of around 20 miles per liter and when the customer actually experiences that car, he is giving getting a mileage of 30 miles per liter. So that is a delight for him. So that is delighters for you. Let us look at what next we have. That is indifferent zones. So the indifferent features are those which are neutral, right? Don't have any uh, preference or that. So they are those that quite simply user does not care about whether you are providing that service or feature or not. In other words, the level of functionality provided by the indifferent features has no bearing on the user's satisfaction level. Examples of indifferent features include could be the type of plastic bottle of juice which comes in, whether, whether the glass uh, tank of a car is located on the left side of a car or on the right side of a car. It doesn't matter to the user. And at, so at any rate, the point of determining which of the product features your users are indifferent to is to avoid investing excess resources in changing and improving the set features. Since no amount of improvement will matter to you user anyway, there's no sense in focusing on optimizing these features. And let us look at what is next we have. So we have the reverse features. So the reverse features are truly the inverse of one dimensional performance features, which I'm going to talk about after this. In other words, reverse features are those which actually detract the user's level of satisfaction as the, they increase the functionality. 
So examples could be the too many buttons on the steering wheel or the, your software which you are using is too complex to use or they are not uh, user friendly. So adding so many features or functions or giving any benefits to it which uh, detracts the user from its actual performance will actually demotivate the user in that case. So two bit uh, reverse function features are basically those which quite simply are unexplainable and clearly add no value to the product or user. Then last but not the least are the one dimension features. So this uh, one dimension basically talks about the features that provide directly correlate to the fun level of functionality. So a typical example could be from the automobile. Say for example, if you are having an automobile, if you are an automobile manufacturer and you are manufacturing a car that provides the average mileage of 15 miles per hour, then you will be a little bit less satisfied as you go on increasing this mileage to say 18 to 20. The satisfaction level of the user will go on increasing in this case. So it's either it's more the better in terms of. So it is totally reverse of opposite of reverse uh, feature category. Okay. So as the organization, you have to be very much careful that whatever is your delight today could become the must be feature tomorrow. And what is your reverse feature today? Could be your one dimensional feature. So you have to keep on improving your features. You have to keep on adding the value to the end users so that the need, which is a must be, which is a delight today, should not become must be or should not result in a low satisfaction level to the customer. So that is kind of model for you. Hope you like this video. Do give the thumbs up and do share with this with all your friends and colleagues and do let me know your views. Thank you and have a good day. Bye.